Hey, welcome back class. This video, we're going to take a look at a little bit more specifics about kinetic energy. And we've learned in previous lessons that kinetic energy is one half mass times the square of the velocity of the object that's in motion. So what, I, what we really want to look at is where does the one half and v squared where does it come from how do, where does where, how do we get that so there's there are several there are several ways to to do this all right there are several ways in this video I want to try to draw some connections to what we did with kinematic equations in previous units. So if you if you need a refresher on that, please go back and watch one of those videos that I, I have on the kinematic equations and also take a look at the notes that I have for you for class. So I, I've, I've drawn that out to show you how we get four, four basic kinematic equations uh, that we use here in physics. So since we're talking about kinetic energy, all right, so ultimately, let me put this back over here. We're looking at kinetic energy, and we want to know where we get the one-half and where we get the squared uh, value from, right? Okay. A couple things we've got to remember here. From the kinematic equations before, we know that we came up with an equation that was velocity squared equals the initial velocity plus two times the acceleration times the change in displacement. We, we had that from a previous lesson. We know as well, talking about work and energy, that work is essentially force times distance, okay? Now let's think about this a little bit more. All right, force times distance. In physics, when we talk about distance, we are really talking about displacement. So we tend to see this written as work equals force times delta x, right? Because we're talking about the amount of displace the uh, the distance, the displacement is being being uh, from the work being done, the displacement of the object. So we tend to mark that with with our delta x, all right? So I just want to do that. So now you should you should be able to see that, okay, well, there's a delta x here and a delta x here. So you should see where we're, the reason why we're putting this here, we're, we're trying to go somewhere that is familiar for both of these equations, all right? So with that said, let me get this out of the way. I'm just going to bring this up here, all right? All right, so now... Let's think about this for a second. As what we've what we've learned in our studies is is when we have multiple equations, what we have to do is figure out how to interrelate the same variables so that we can bring everything together. Because ultimately, all of these things are related. Each equation is just an expression talking about one particular condition. So let's focus on our kinematic equation just for a second. All right. If we try to rearrange this to where we can start separating out the, the displacement, we can, we, we can do so. We would know that we would subtract vi squared here, right? So that would give you velocity squared minus vi squared, right? That equals 2 times acceleration times the displacement, right? Okay. Now let's come over here to work. We know that force is mass times acceleration. So now let's just bring this down. So we have work equals this. All right. So now we can almost immediately see. Let me, let me grab something different. We can almost immediately see that right there is a similarity. All right. Right there is a similarity. So now let's let's get those expressions somehow together. Well, on this side, if I divide this side by two, it goes away. I come over here and divide this by two. What I have is the acceleration times the change in displacement equals 
vf squared minus vi squared divided by 2. All right. Now you should see that right here, acceleration time dis displacement, and we have acceleration time displacement, both exactly the same expressions. Now what we can do is kind of algebraically do uh, integrate these two together because both of those are the same. So since we're talking about kinetic energy, and we know that work equals the kinetic energy, since we know that those relationships are true because work and energy are measured in the same unit, then it makes sense that we want to bring all of this to here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So now what we do is we have work equals mass, and now we can substitute. All right, we know that it's mass times z times acceleration times the displacement. But now we can take that mass, and we just bring over all of this. And we substitute it, because we know that we've got vf squared minus vi squared divided by 2. And it gives us that right there. Now, if we start to distribute... Mass times this, mass times this. You know, just like you do in math class, you get mass times velocity squared, final squared, minus mass times the initial velocity squared, right? And that is all divided by 2. Okay. Work is the result of the, the, kinetic, the kinetic energy. We, we, we know this. If we, when we're, when we're done here, let, let's, if we, if we sort of factor out the mass, all right? So we've got work. So if we factor the mass back out, we're back to something like this, right? So, Let's think about this for a second. All right. We know we still have this. We know we still have this. Okay. We have the mass. We have basically the two on the bottom means that's a one half. All right. If we look at just this part right here, if you think about what happens on a graph, you have two points. So you have your final minus your initial. And what happens is, is when you take the difference of those, right? Because this is VF squared minus the initial squared, you wind up with just your average velocity, right? Your average velocity. So you're you're going to wind up with just it, if if you factor this back out, what you have, oh my gosh, this thing keeps switching on me. Sorry, my apologies. If you factor this out, once you have VF squared minus VI squared. So we're back up to where we were up here at the top. Which is going to be the same as mass times whatever the new, that average velocity is, right? But it's squared. Divided by 2. Right? Divided by 2. Well, you can see that this is 1 half mv squared. And that's what we have over here for work. And remember, work and kinetic energy are interrelated. Well, now we know where the 1 half and we know where the squared velocity comes from. It comes from basically integrating those two objects. Or I'm sorry, not those two objects. Those two equations there. We're looking at the two conditions of work and the kinematic equation of the final velocity of an object that's in motion in, 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 in a linear way, right? And all we've done is combine those two together. We've integrated the two equations together. All right. And it gives us 1 half mv squared. All right. So I hope that helped. Uh, please rewind and take a look at all of this. Take some good notes. It always helps if you write these things out yourself. Uh, 
it, it really helps put things in perspective for you to get a better, better understanding of what's going on. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Always great learning with you. I will see you in another video soon, and you take care. Bye-bye.